This is a condenser lid. You put this on top of your boil kettle and it captures all of the steam during the boil. I've used it once before, but I've got an idea for an experiment that I think will have it working a lot better for me. I have no idea if this is a great idea or a complete dud. Let's find out together as I brew a French Belgian farmhouse ale. It's Beer de Garde. My name is Martin Keane. I'm taking the Hovery Challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. Today's beer is Beer de Garde. This is a farmhouse ale, and I'm going to mash this one here at 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius. Let's get it in. You know, I've, I've had a few comments about my my whisk. People saying, where do I get it? Um, honestly, I have no idea where I got this thing from. I uh, bought it a long time ago. Uh, I looked at my Amazon shopping list, it wasn't there. So I guess I got it from a, a homebrew store somewhere. Um, yeah, it's a good whisk. Now there are three different types of beer de garde. There's blonde, amber and brown. I'm going to be brewing this one on the lighter end of the spectrum, as you can probably tell from the grist. And beer de garde translates to beer of keeping. The idea being that this beer was made in the autumn or in the fall when the, the malt was harvested and everything was fresh and it was lagered or kept all the way through until the spring. I'm not sure I'm going to be quite that patient. Okay, going to mash for about an hour. So the recipe for today's beer, well, we're looking at a fairly high gravity beer. This is going to have an original gravity of 1070, uh, so about 8.1% ABV. And I mentioned I'm going to be brewing really the blonde version of this beer, so looking at an SRM of around 9. That means using a lot of pale ingredients. I'll be starting off as my base malt with a Belgian pale malt that makes up 60% of the grist. I'm then adding in 15% each of Vienna malt and Munich one malt. And then the only malt with really any significant color to it is aromatic malt, which I will add in at 3%. The final 7% is going to be added in at the boil. That's where I'm gonna add some sugar just to bring up the ABV while helping to dry out the beer. And for that, I'm gonna be using honey. Now, while the beer's mashing, just a reminder of how this condenser lid works. Basically, it's gonna sit on top of my kettle here during the boil. And then I have this tubing, this pipe connected to it. In the top here, I'm gonna send in cold water through a mister. That's on this device here. So the mister is spraying in cold water. As the steam rises from the boil, it will go through this tubing be met by the mister and it will condense, hence condense the lid. And it will come out the bottom here and drip into a bucket. Now the first problem I had with using this was entirely of my own making. Beer is in the fermenter. I took a gravity reading, 1054. I was looking for 1062 and yeah, I think that is what happens when you wing it. Yeah, I missed my gravity by a mile because I didn't account for the much, much lower boil off rate. So first things first, let's address that in Beersmith. So this time, no winging it. I'm going to do this somewhat properly in Beersmith. I'm still guessing a little bit, but let me show you what I've done. So I've got my equipment profile in here for my claw hammer supply system. And you can see here that it has a boil off rate of 1.2 gallons per hour. And that seems pretty accurate when I'm not using a condenser lid. But when I am using a condenser lid, well, last time I saw a much, much smaller boil off rate and spike brewing say it will be at least 
50% less. So what I've done is I've created a second equipment profile here for the claw hammer system. And I've set the boil off rate to 0.3 gallons per hour, which I'm guessing here, but I think that seems a little bit closer to what I saw last time. Now what that means is that's gonna affect how much water I use in the brew. So if I take a look at my recipes, this is the beer de garde, and this is assuming just the regular claw hammer equipment profile. And you can see here that I need about eight gallons of water. But when I apply the second profile, the profile with a much smaller boil off rate, you can see now that I need significantly less water to start with, about seven gallons. So that's what I'm going with in today's brew. So the experiment, the way that this condenser lid works is you have two buckets of water. You have a bucket of water filled with like cold tap water that's pumped in through the mister and you have a second bucket which collects the water as it's flowed through the system plus any of the liquid that's condensed from the steam. And you need to keep topping up the fill bucket that's providing the water and dumping out the bucket uh, that's that contains the warmer water. Um, it is quite a lot of water that goes through the system. So in a one hour boil, you might get through about 15 gallons of water. Now, I think there may be a better way to do this without using a lot of water. So what I've done is I've taken my fermenter here. This is the fermenter that's gonna receive the beer when it's done. Um, I filled it up with just tap water and then I've put my cooling coil in it and I'm running glycol through this. So I've got really, really cold water now. And my plan is to use this as both the intake to the condenser lid, but also to receive the condensed water that comes out of the system. When I tried this the first time, I was seeing about a 30 degree Fahrenheit difference between the water going in and the water coming out. So what I'm banking on is that this glycol system can keep the water cool enough to overcome that difference in temperature and therefore I'll just be recirculating the same water through the system over and over. There's only one way to find out if this is going to work. So the hops for this beer, well I have bittering hops and then aroma hops. The bittering hop I'm going to use is Tetnang, this is going to go in right at the start of the boil. And then at the end of the boil, I'm going to add both Tetnang again, and then Halatau Herzbrucker as my aroma hops. These will both add sort of floral and herbal notes to the beer. Um, at the end of the boil as well is when I will be adding in my honey. Okay, so I've put a pump in my fermenter here that is going into the mister, that's spraying down cold water and then the tubing here at the bottom is dripping back in to, uh, into the fermenter. I did see it's quite important that this tubing not be underwater because that could create a vacuum. So um, this stops just short of the water level. So I'm gonna start recirculation. From experience of last time, I'm only using about 30% uh, power on the heating element. Normally I use around 55 or 60, but you need less power to heat this up uh, with the condenser lid on. That pump is noisy. So how did it go? Well, I would say it was somewhat successful. Um, what I noticed was there was about a 30 degree Fahrenheit difference between the water that I was sending in and then the water that would come out once the boil really got going. Um, but what I also noticed is that the overall temperature of the water kept creeping up and up and up. Um, after about 
15 minutes, so about halfway through, it had gone from being around 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, even the glycol chiller itself was struggling to keep its temperature cool. So what I ended up doing was dumping some ice into the water and that reduced the temperature by about five degrees and it never rose above about 78 Fahrenheit for the remainder of the boil. So between the glycol chiller and a little bit of ice, I was able to condense all the steam by reusing the same water. As far as gravity goes, well, I came in at 1063. I was aiming for 1070. So I'm not really sure what to make of that because my pre-boil gravity was about three points where I thought it would be, but my final gravity ended up being seven points. So perhaps I haven't got the boil off thing right just yet, but that said, I have got just about three gallons of beer at the end of this. The yeast that I'll be adding into this beer, French Saison yeast, this is Y yeast 3711, and I'm going to ferment this one at 65 Fahrenheit. All right, that's it. See you at the tasting. Well, fancy seeing you here. Hi. <laughs> so, beer de garde. Um, this one is intended to be lagered, so you want to give this a bit of time to age. Okay. It's only six weeks. So, okay. just putting that out there out up front. But um, what do you think of this rather attractive color? Not to influence you in any way. It's very nice, um, but to go for a six week thing, I honestly have never heard of this beer or tried it. So it could be six weeks or it could be six years. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what would you care? Yeah. <laughs> um, but color wise, uh, it is really beautiful looking. Um, not to say amber, it's not amber, I guess. It's more of a clementine. Oh, color. <laughs> Are you looking these up before the tastings at this point? It's the smell, the aroma of Belgium. Again, I can really get that, that Belgian yeast. I can smell that. It smells kind of sweet. Okay, try it? let's go. Okay. So not related to the taste so much, but the mouthfeel, nice and fizzy. Very fizzy, yeah. Yeah, quite malty. Quite malty. Um, like I, like I said, I smelt the sweetness, I taste the sweetness. Um, can't really pick out what's making it sweet. Like a sort of fruity sweetness or yeah, a toffee like, sweetness, kind, caramel? Kind of like, um, you know, how figs taste. They're not great, but, <laughs> well, texture wise. The sweetness around a fig, I don't know what they put it in, maybe like molasses or something. That's what that reminds me of. So that thing that doesn't taste great, that's what the beer tastes texture like. Texture wise does not <laughs> taste great. Yeah but taste-wise is good. Yeah, I, I am getting a bit of the sweetness too, mm -hmm. um, but it's really layered in with the maltiness, isn't yes. it, I think? I don't know what age would really do to a beer like this. To me, it kind of tastes ready like this, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't really imagine it tasting an awful lot different with time. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so either. All right, so next week, we're gonna have to do a little bit more than just sit here and drink beers. I'm gonna put you to work. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so we actually have a bit of a taste comparison going on with next week's beer. Oh, that's fun. Mm. Okay. Well, until then, recipe in the description. Um, Atlantic Brew Supply also have a kit available. And Lauren, cheers. cheers.